feel what I'm saying? You could tap in, you could tap out, but you know my slogan. You know what I suggest, and I suggest you tap in, so let's get right into it. Now listen, you already know how we do here. Time and energy are the highest forms of currency. Time and energy are the highest forms of currency, my G, at all times. Already know they got you all here chasing the bag, chasing that money, chasing that moolah, getting to that guap, getting to that paper. But understand this, and always keep in the front of your mental Rolodex, that time and energy, highest forms of currency at all times. I mean, it is what it is, and it'll be what it's going to be. Now, listen, man, big salute to all my day one investors. Big salute to all the newcomers, all the new subscribers, everybody that's tapped into the channel. You know, it is what it is, and it'll be what it's going to be, but this is Grown Man Business TV. And if you ain't handling that Grown Man Business first and foremost, this ain't the place for you. Big salute to all my shooters that's coming to the chat. You already know how we give it up. Them wrenches. My homies always come with the tools. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll blow. We ain't got to get into that. So you already see the thumbnail. You already see the title. Um, It's obvious. Unless you've been sleeping under a rock. That it's active outside right now. Oh, it's active outside right now. You know, you got Kendrick dropping a verse that shook up the rap game. You know what I mean? Like that, you know, it, it, he dropped a verse with Metro Boom in the future, shook up the rap game. And, you know, you had J. Cole respond. We already know J. Cole is now Gandhi. You know, we're going to talk about J. Cole. We're going to talk about everybody. But, you know, I'm just giving you a synopsis. I'm giving you some some context on what, what we discussing right now. You understand? And J. Cole is the new Gandhi, right? So you had J. Cole respond. You had J. Cole double back and apologize. And then... You know, what really, what really made me disappointed in J. Cole, you got to understand something. What really made me disappointed in J. Cole is, is, is the apology. But on top of the apology, he turns around and he takes seven minute drill off of all streaming platforms. <laughs> I went looking for the I went looking for the diss track and it's gone. He has taken it off of all streaming platforms. And we're going to talk about that. Um, But not only J. Cole, not only J. Cole, we got a fire Fire diss track from Ricky Rose. And we're going to talk about that as well. You know what I'm saying? Rick Ross. Ricky Rose. <laughs> Rick Ross. You know what I mean? The promised land. You feel me? Uh, Ricky Rose. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. Fat Boy Fresh dropped a fire diss track to Drake Drizzy. You know what I mean? Is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. You're going to respect. You're going to respect what it is. You know what I mean? You're going to respect this, this, this hip hop thing. You're going to respect the activity that take place, my G. I mean, that's what's going on. It is what it is, and it'll be what it's going to be. So it's a lot going on right now. And not all, and, the, and, and, and listen, amongst all of that, around all of that, you know what I mean? You got Drizzy Drake dropping a diss track. Now, Now Drizzy Drake dropped a diss track dissing everybody. You know what I mean? He, 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 dissed, he dissed Kendrick Lamar. You know, he dissed Metro Boomin. He has some subliminal disses in there for future. You know, he got at Ricky Rose. He got at Rick Ross. Um, not only that, he, he, he got at John Morant. I mean, he, he really took his time and strategically sent shots at everybody in the game that he felt like he needed to approach. And one thing for sure, two things for certain, I got to respect that. I got I to gotta respect that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not a Drake fan. I am not DJ Academics. I am not one of these these geeks, one of these lames, one of these suckers that 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 just ride on Drake coattails. Like that's not me. I'm here for real hip hop, pure authentic hip hop. You understand what I'm saying? I come from the '90s. I come from a day and an age where you had to rap. There were no room. It was no room for ghostwriters. It was no room for all the extra BS that been added to the game. All the extra preservatives. So I'm a purist when it comes to this rap thing. I'm a, I'm a real purist. That's what separate me from, you know, DJ Academics and, and all of these suckers. See, back in the day, the lames didn't have no say-so in what went down in hip-hop. The lames, and, and this, is, this is respectfully because, you know, I like DJ Academics. I, I, I like his, his content. You know, I, I, I rock with what he got going on. But you got to understand something. DJ Academics is the dude in school back in the day that was getting bullied in class. DJ Academics was the dude back in the day that couldn't get the girlfriend, couldn't get Shorty to, to, to lock in with him. He was the one that got joked on about his weight. That's who DJ Academics is in, in this new age, in this new era. All you got to do is have some money, 
have a little bit of clout, a little bit of prestige. And now you got to say so on what gangsters do. Now you can have a say so on what real rappers, real lyricists do. So again, this is no hate towards DJ Academics, but I look at his platform and his content and I say to myself, when I was growing up in the 90s, DJ Academics, yeah, Wu-Tang Clan, Method Man, they would have ran down on DJ Academics the same way they ran down on Joe Buttons. And yeah, they would have did something to him. He would have knew not to be running this, but it is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. Drake did his thing, but I want to say something, you know, that, that, that diss track from Drake was, was, was lukewarm, my G. I know a lot of y'all don't want to hear this. I know a lot of y'all, you know, a lot of y'all don't want to, don't, because y'all all Drake fans, y'all, y'all Drake stands. But I'm here to tell you that that diss track from Drake was lukewarm. It was, it was, it was, it was. I wasn't, you know, it is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. I can't give it praise. It wasn't like that. I, I, I really expected Drake to go hard on my G. I expected Drake to, to really go hard in the paint. You understand me? And because that this that Drake did was lukewarm, you know, you got Ricky Rose on his neck. Ricky Rose on his, yeah, Rose did his thing on that track. Is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be, homie. Oh, man. Oh, listen, man. I ain't got the shooters in the chat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It is what it is, though. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Drake diss track was lukewarm. Now, 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 let's break this down one by one, rapper by rapper, artist by artist, lyric by lyric. Let's, let's get into each artist one by one. You understand what I'm saying? J. Cole. <laughs> J. Cole has officially taken himself out of the top five, out of the top ten conversation. I don't care how good J. Cole raps. I don't care how, how much of a lyricist he is. I don't care about none of that. Hip hop is active. When it comes to the rap game, when it comes to this, to this culture that we all indulge in, you got to get active, my G. Friends or no friends. Yeah, we, 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 we can be friends off the court, but when it's time to get on the court, when it's time to play ball, when it's time to get active, we get active and we do it unapologetically. It is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. So me personally, I was a big J. Cole fan. I've been listening to J. Cole since the mixtapes, since the come up, since the warm up, since the blow up. Yeah, J. Cole got some classic material and I will still listen to some of his work but one thing for sure two things for certain i don't want to hear no more i don't want to hear no more rhymes raps and riddles from j cole i think j cole should take some time off work on his mental health you understand what i'm saying work on his mental health i think j cole should take a trip out there to to india and i think he should start meditating with the with the buddhists out there i think he should go off into the mountains and and disappear for a year or two and meditate, get his mind right. You understand what I'm saying? I think that J. Cole is now the, the hip hop Gandhi. He's Gandhi. Yeah, he, he's the new positive Gandhi in Nelson Mandela of hip hop. That's what I believe and that's how I feel and, that, and that's what it is. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, and it's not even how I feel, that's just my perspective on the situation. Drake, we don't want to, I mean, J. Cole, we don't want to hear no more raps about you being the best. We don't want to hear no more subliminals about what you will do or what you won't do. One thing for sure, two things for certain. We know after you do whatever you're going to do, you're going to apologize. J. Cole has officially taken himself out of the top five, top ten. I, I'm not even going to conversate with J. Cole when it comes to to where he's placed that in the rap game. It is what it is and it'll be what it's gonna be. You know what I mean? It, it, it is what it is and it'll be what it's gonna be. You know, salute to everybody in the chat. You know what I mean? That's J. Cole. J. Cole should absolutely, he should absolutely bad back, double down, go meditate, go get your mental health under control, homie. Yeah, 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 we, we you know, this is hip hop. And the last thing I thought is that J. Cole would water down hip-hop. J. Cole 
watered down the culture. Watered down the culture. And we're we going to step back into J. Cole now. Now, let's talk about Drake. No, 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 no. Let's talk about Rick Ross. <laughs> hey, big salute to Ricky Rose. You know what I mean? I really like what he did with that diss track. Now, a lot of people in the DM saying, Big G and BTV, the Oracle. And don't you forget the TV and you better always remember the Oracle. You know, do you think that, you know, is your perspective that Rick Ross is, is, is racist? This is, listen, I got about 30 DMs with people asking me, is Rick Ross racist for calling Drake a white boy? And I got I to gotta tell you something. We're going to talk good and bad when it comes to Rick Ross. But right now, we're going to talk about good. Absolutely not. Absolutely not, my G. See, one thing for sure, two things for certain, you're going to understand something. Drake is half Jewish. Drake mama is Jewish. When you look at the old pictures of Drizzy Drake, when you look at the, the, the beginning stages of, of Drizzy, back when he was Aubrey Graham, when he was Drizzy Aubrey Graham, you can see the Jewish in him. You can see his nose. You can tell that Drake has got cosmetic surgery done on his nose. He got a fake six pack. Drake done did a whole lot of work under the knife, my G. Is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. So Drake is considered a white boy when it comes to the culture. J. Cole is too. Oh, let me break this down. You know, Drake and J. Cole are the... Or the you know, the, the white and black mix, you know, they got white dad, you know, they mixed up. And when they come to the ghetto, when they come to the hood, they come party with, with the hoodsters. Drake is the one that came with J. Cole. See, J. Cole, he, he brought Drake to the party. Yeah, he brought Drake to the party. He say, no, nah, man, everybody, Drake is cool. He's, he's good. He's one of us. And then next thing you know, shit start getting wicked. J. Cole, the one that ran off. You know, when you get in a fight in a party and you look for your homie and he done ran off, that's J. Cole. And he left Drake in the party full of hood dudes, full of hoodsters. See, 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 I like what Rick Ross did. Rick Ross tapped into a side of Drake that he don't talk about. Drick, Rick Ross tapped into a side of Drake that he's, he's, he's insecure about. Drake is insecure about his, his Jew side, his, his mother's side, the, the white part of him. Drake wants to be, you know, he wanted to be accepted in the culture. The, the, the black culture. And see, one thing for sure, two things for certain. These are the topics that when people, people don't want to talk about. These are the topics that in the angles that nobody speaks about. Nobody talks about how Drake talked, you know, when he first came in the game, how he was insecure, how he felt like he wasn't black enough, how he felt like he wasn't white enough. He didn't know where he fit in at. Why do you think Drake always wearing cornrows in his hair? He finally found the artist that could cornrow that hair. He could cornrow that dog fur that he got up there. Drake always got cornrows in. You ever notice that he, he wants to be the culture and Rick Ross tapped into that. The only thing I didn't like about Rick Ross is this, is that Rose, he says something at the end of the disc that I, I just wasn't, I didn't feel it. I, I didn't like it. Salute wisdom B, what it do my G. Rose said that Rick Ross was the police. Hmm. Rose said, Rick Ross is the police, but we all know that Rose used to be a correctional officer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Rose, I, I rock with you. I like what you did with the, the, the white boy angle. I like that angle. I, I even push a T. I don't think anybody really, really stepped into that angle or the white boy angle. And I, I like that. But. You, of all people, should never call somebody the police, Ricky Rose. That should have been the last word that came out of your mouth is police. We all saw the pictures. I was, again, I'm an 80s baby. I was, I was, I was running around. I was whipping and running when, 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 when 50 Cent went ahead and exposed that you was a police officer. 
I saw, I saw the whole debacle unfold. I remember you denying that you was a police officer. You was going on every media outlet telling people that that was a lie, that that was not you, that that had nothing to do with you, that that was photoshopped. And then at the end of the battle with you and 50 Cent, you had to admit that you actually was a correctional officer. Now, let me break this down to you, homie. You can't just get up and go be a correctional officer. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just something you just anybody gets to get up and do. You got to have a clean record. They're going to run your background. You got to go through the academy. You got to go through all these obstacles, homie, to become a correctional officer. And we all saw the picture of you shaking that white woman's hand. See, you talking about Drake being white, but you didn't mind shaking that white lady hand to get that certificate. To be a correctional officer. That's the only thing I didn't like about the diss from, from Ricky Rose. I thought that that was, I thought that that was hypocritical, contradicting. I thought it was a lot of things, homie. You know, I I I, I like the I like the diss. I like what you did with that. But at the end of that part, you should have you should have got rid of the whole police reference. You should have never said that. But to, your, to, your, to, your, to the good of Ricky Ross, again, I like how active he is. Now, listen, regardless if Ricky Rose was a police officer or not, and we all know he was a, a, a correctional officer in the jail, he still got behind the mic and got fucking active. See? See what I mean? Hip hop, homie. This is, this is hip hop, J. Cole. This is the rap game. This is, this is what you signed up for. So for you to step in and then step out and apologize, disgusting work. I don't like to use the word disappointed when it come to other grown men because I feel like you're not my child, you're not my wife, you're not up under my wing. So I, it's hard for me to be disappointed in another grown man. But J. Cole, I'm disappointed in you because look at Rick Ross. Even Ricky Rose stepped out of there and made a song called Champagne Moments where he went at Drake neck. It is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. Rap or no rap. If you like it or if you don't. If you want to be friends after this, we can be friends. If you don't want to be friends, we ain't got to be friends. But we going to engage in this rap. Yeah, we going to, it's going to be, phys yeah, contact, lyrical warfare. So I got to salute Ricky Rose. Because even though he know we all seen the pictures of him as a correctional officer, we all know Ricky Rose was a correctional officer. He still got behind the mic and got active, homie. He still took out a few seconds of his day, got in the studio, laid some bars down for Drake, and went about his, yeah, it is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. Big salute to the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He shook the white lady hand for that certificate. <laughs> and Drizzy is far from the goat, homie. Drizzy, Drizzy, let me tell you something. How, look, look, Howard, let me tell you something. Drake is not even a hip-hop artist. This is what people fail to understand. Drake is a pop star. He's an alternative music star. He does alternative music. Drake has ghostwriters. We don't know if Drake wrote this battle rap or if somebody helped him write it. I don't. We don't know if Drake got with Quentin Miller and wrote this whole track and, 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 and Quentin Miller. We don't know who wrote this song that Drake just released. We don't know. You know, Howard, can you tell me, can you be 100% sure that Drake wrote that battle, that Drake wrote that song? Nah. That's first off. Secondly, secondly, we didn't know if Drake was going to rap like he was from Jamaica, if he was going to rap like he was from, you know, Africa. We don't know if Drake was going to use his his UK accent. We didn't know if Drake was going to use his, 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 his Canada accent. We didn't know if Drake was going to use his Memphis accent. We didn't know if Drake was going to use his Houston accent. We don't know. We don't know. We don't, so we don't know who Drake is, homie. Drake, Drake could be from Jamaica. He could, 
He could be from the UK. He could do the, the African, you know, vibes. He could do the Houston, the, the Memphis, the Canada. We don't know who Drake is. And on top of that, we don't even know if he wrote that. We don't know who he is. So Drake is definitely not the GOAT. He's far from the GOAT. But I will say this. He gets active. He gets active. You understand me? Push a T, wipe his nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push a T, wipe his nose. See, see, you got to understand something. And we're going to talk about this when it comes to Drake. Drake was in conflict for a long time with his Jewish side, with his black side. He didn't know who he was. He, he didn't have any identity. He was too dark-skinned to be Jewish. And he was too light-skinned to be black. So Drake always had this inner workings, this inner conflict with himself, right? And that's the main reason why Drake took that picture in blackface. Because any black man, any real, yeah, any black man, anybody of the culture, anybody that's from the hood, anybody that's in tune with hip-hop, not just rap, but hip hop would have never taken a picture like that. So Howard, you got to ask yourself this. Answer this. Why did your boy, your goat, why did he take a picture with blackface and red lipstick all on his mouth? Like with his hand. Why did he do that? Why did Drake do that? Drake is, is no goat. Drake is a MC Hammer. He is a Vanilla Ice. Drake is the new age Vanilla Ice, my G. Ice, ice, baby, too cold. You remember Vanilla Ice? Drake is logic. Drake is, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's those. He's an Eminem. Drake is a, is a, is a, a little bit dark skinned Eminem. Well, we, we exactly. So I want to say this, like, even though Rick Ross was a was a CEO, even though Rick Ross was a, a police officer, I don't know if that even matters when it comes to Drake, because Drake can't talk about him being a cop and you the same one had a black face. Yeah, you got we got pictures of you in blackface. So which which position is more compromising? I ain't going to lie. I would rather be a CEO at a prison. Than to ever take a picture, to ever let somebody paint black shit all over my face and paint my whole mouth red. I would rather work in a prison. I would rather be a CO. I would rather be a cop, my G. It is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. I would rather be a, a, bro, I would rather be an FBI agent. Than to ever, ever let some white boys convince me to put black paint all over my face, paint red lipstick all over my damn mouth and take pictures in blackface. So one thing for sure, two things for certain. I think that somebody, yeah, it's time to tap back into that angle. Somebody, I would, I, I, you know, I like the angle that Rick Ross took and I wish he would have asked and said something about that blackface in that song. Because he called him a white boy. He called Drake a white boy. And I, I thought that was genius. Because <laughs> Drake, you're not black, homie. You're definitely not black, homie. You, Drake is, why do you think Drake is so rich? Why do you think Drake is worth damn near a billion dollars you think it's because he's drake no it's really because drake tapped into his jewish side see when drake do song oh we gonna get deep into this when drake do songs like bend that ass over make the coochie breathe the jewish people the higher ups and the elites know how how destructive that is to the black community when Drake do songs with, when, when Drake do songs telling women to bend that ass over and make the coochie breathe, the Jewish people know how destructive that is to the black community. 
They know how to con they know how destructive it is. I told y'all in my last pre-recording. If you didn't see it in my last pre-recording, I told you, homie, Drake should get with Sexy Red, and they should do a a, a, a mixtape. They should do a collab album called "Bend That Ass Over and Make the Coochie Breathe." And I think Sexy Red and Drake should bend that ass over and let their coochies breathe. No ditty. No ditty. So. I got to address any time, like, again, when you got dudes like DJ Academics telling everybody that Drake is the GOAT, you got to understand DJ Academics is not of the culture, just like Drake is not of the culture. DJ Academics is a Bonte boy from Jamaica, boy. Bumba clot, pussy with a bumba ross. Pussy clot, bumba rot, Bonte boy. Bonte boy is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be it is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be and in due time all in alkaline lifestyle what it do love what it do the only female wrench in this thing the only female moderator that'll blow your top off you understand yeah 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 yeah. salute oh anytime i see or oh, anytime i see all in alkaline lifestyle gotta salute Real one in these YouTube streets. But yeah, DJ Academics is a bounty pussy to bumba clock. That's what DJ Academics is. And in due time, being as though black people, FBA, foundational black Americans, we started this culture. Even the, the islanders, even the foreigners, everybody that's indulged in this culture is going to have to pick a side, my G. And that's what Rick Ross did. And I like that. I got a lot of people in the DMs, you know, GMB TV, you know, you think Rick Ross is racist? What do you feel? This is what I think. That's my perspective on that. You're going to have to pick a side, homie. DJ Academics is a guest in hip hop. Drake is a guest in hip hop, just like Eminem is a guest in hip hop. Biggie Smalls, a guest in hip hop. Busta Rhymes, a guest in hip hop. Huh? Fat Joe, a guest. DJ, K I could go down the list, homie guests in this thing you guys are are visitors and you know on a deeper on a deeper scale of this thing because I, I you know i'm gonna address these the rappers and the rap beef but after i do that we're gonna go a little bit left we're gonna talk about this now last but not least kendrick lamar i'm team kendrick lamar I'm Team Kendrick, homie. I rock with, 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 with yeah, K Dot. And 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 in my in my perspective, my synopsis is K Dot is about to drop a nuclear bomb on this dude. It's about to be a nuclear bomb dropped on the game, homie. Because one thing for sure, two things for certain. Drake didn't say anything. I, you know that diss that he did was lukewarm. It was not. I, I'm you know I'm watching everybody go crazy and I'm listening to this this song and I'm saying to myself. Drake is, he done fell off. He done got too much money. That shit lukewarm. When you going against somebody like K-Dot, somebody that really grew up in the hood, somebody that really grew up in the culture, somebody that's highly in tune with the culture of rap and hip hop, is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. That was no back to back what Drake gave out right there. That was no back to back, homie. That was no... You know, nah, K Dot is still, it's 1 0. And I'm giving that to K Dot. Right? So there, there you go, the synopsis on that. I broke down J. Cole. J. Cole is the Gandhi of rap. We don't want to hear any, I, I like all of J. Cole's old music. Even this album that he just dropped. Um, My favorite song on that album is called Hunting Rabbits. Absolute fire track. But the fact that J. Cole apologized and then took seven minute drill off of all streaming platforms lets me know you're not built for this game, J. Cole. Yeah, the white boy came. J. Cole's mixed as well, just like Drake. J. Cole mother is white. J. Cole mother is white. So when you don't understand what he did that and why this happened, it's because J. Cole tapped into the, the Caucasian side of himself. He brought the Caucasian side to the rap game. He brought the Caucasian side to hip hop. Absolute no-no. So 
J. Cole has taken himself out of the top five. J. Cole is no longer a factor in hip hop. He is no longer, you know, a, 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 a piece of the conversation. And I want to leave this when it comes to J. Cole. J. Cole set a horrible example for the, for the youth. He set a horrible example for upcoming hip hop artists. He set a horrible example. This was, this was the universe telling J. Cole to show the youngsters how to do this. It's like when Jay-Z said, I show you how to do this, son. Jay-Z said one time, I'm going to show you how to do this, son. See, J. Cole had been built up to now give a prime example of what you do with this hip hop thing. And what he did, he seized fire. He backed out. He folded up. Yeah, it's a full world. And that's a terrible example for the youth, for the upcoming artists. You're supposed to show them that, yeah, y'all get your money. Get rich. Get your mama out the hood. Be great businessmen. But the core of this hip hop thing is lyrical warfare. The core, of the, the core of it, the pure aspect of hip hop is to go to battle lyrically and we could find out who's the greatest, who's the best lyrically. Jay-Z did it. Nas did it. The greats do it. So J. Cole is a disappointment. That's Cole. Rick Ross, I love the diss. I love what he did. I love the angle. I love how he approached Rick Drake on that diss track. Rick Ross, highly impressed with what you did, homie. I love the fact that Rick Ross is a boss. Rick Ross got more money than J. Cole. Rick Ross is, is more, more, more business savvy. You know, Rick Ross is on a certain level, and he still took time to go in the booth, and he still took time to write those bars, and he didn't apologize about it. We're going to give you these bars unapologetically. It is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. And I got to respect Rick Ross for that. But the whole police angle, I don't know, Rick Ross. You, you, was, you was in your bag. You, you was filling yourself. You got 113 rooms in that house and you, you forgot that you used to be a correctional officer. <laughs> Rick Ross, you used, to, you used to be a police officer. You can't call somebody the police when you used to be the police. Everything was perfect until you said something about the police. I, I just wasn't feeling that. Right? That's, that's Drake, J. Cole, Rick Ross. Now, Drake, again, Drake grew up in conflict, internal conflict. He always had a conflict from his Jewish in his black side, because really, when you when you you really not supposed to mix, and you already know how I feel about that. You already know what I think about that. The black man should marry and reproduce with the black woman, and every other culture should do the same. But when a black man has a baby with a Jewish woman, that child is going to be in internal conflict. That child is not going to be accepted fully by black people, and that child is not going to be accepted by Jewish people. So Drake always had this weird thing where he would let his little cor his, his his hair grow out and he would try to get cornrows and you know Drake is not a part of hip hop culture. Drake is a pop star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is what it is, and it'll be what it's gonna be. The game is real. The real has to be spoken. Everybody in my DM asking me, is Rick Ross racist? And I'm here to tell you he's not racist. He's just keeping it real. Nobody wants the real anymore. Everybody wants it sugar-coated. Everybody wants the dope to be stepped on 13 times. Everybody wants the dope to be stepped on. Nobody wants the dope straight off the brick into the bottles. See, I grew up getting the dope right off the brick into the bottles. That raw, pure, uncut, homie. No extras, no preservatives. Game Boy 60. Yeah, come on, homie. Come on, homie. We don't play video games over here. This is not a... We, we, you know, I used to... When I was a kid, I had a Game Boy. But this is grown man business TV now. When I was a youngster, when I was a child, I had a Game Boy. Nintendo Game Boy. I ain't played a video game since, homie. I ain't played a video game since. 
So it is what it is and it'll be what it's gonna be. You in the right place. Drake is, is, is half Jewish and, and half black and he don't know what he wanna be. Drake don't know if he wanna be with Lil Wayne or if, or if he wanna wear a black face, a whole face of paint with red lipstick all around his mouth. I guarantee you if Lil Wayne knew that he had pictures in blackface, Lil Wayne would have never signed Drake. Drake would have never been signed to Lil Wayne. Drake would have never been under cash money if he knew that those pictures existed. So Drake got a, got a lot to address. You understand me? Back in the day, you, you're wearing blackface. Now you're doing songs with Sexy Red. See, one thing for sure, two things for certain. Drake need to do a mixtape, a, a collab album with Sexy Red since he loves Sexy Red so much, since that's his best friend. And what he should do is, is, is make a collab album called Bend That Ass Over to Let His Coochie Breathe because Drake need to let his coochie breathe. No ditty. No ditty. No ditty. I'm going to say it one more time. But Drake need to let us. Drake got a lot of coochie in him. Drake got a lot of coochie in him, homie. Is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. And last but not least, K-Dot. Because we're going to take this to a whole nother angle. You know, K-Dot is, 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 is top. It's top tier. You ask me right now, when it comes to this generation of rappers, when it comes to this generation of hip-hop artists, Kendrick Lamar is top of the mountain. J. Cole has taken himself off the mountain, and Drake was never on the fucking mountain. You understand what I'm saying? J. Cole has eliminated himself from the conversation, and Drake has never been on the mountain because Drake has a picture with blackface. Drake got a picture with a whole bunch of red lipstick on, blackface. Drake paints his nails. Drake gets his hair permed out and puts borets in it. Drake need to bend that ass over and let his coochie breathe with sexy red. No ditty. But Drake got a lot of coochie in him. Drake been soft as Dollar Tree cotton, homie. So Drake was never on the mountain. K-Dot, top of the mountain. And K-Dot is going to drop a nuclear bomb on these boys because you got to understand something. K-Dot only did one verse with Metro Boomin in Future and it caused all this uproar. All this smoke, all this, all this, this everything that's happening is off 116. So imagine when he give them a whole song. Imagine when he, when he drops a whole song addressing this shit. Imagine that. So K dot to me, top tier. Salute Russia. We international, baby. Yeah, he, we international. We've we, we been there, but salute to Russia. And you know what? Being as though Russia is in the building, that's going to that's gonna lead me into my next angle. That's going to lead me into the meat and potatoes of the situation. See, I bring y'all in. Talking that celebrity talk. We talking about hip hop. We talking about battles. We talking about the elite rappers getting active because that's what hip hop is about, getting active. But you gotta know something. The high erupts in the elites are at work. See, this is the angle that you're not probably gonna get from nowhere else. Maybe a Hassan Campbell. Big salute to Hassan Campbell because I'm sure Hassan Campbell will give you an angle or two talking from this from this perspective but it's only a few on youtube that's gonna give you this perspective i carved out a lane for the real and i'm the only one in it it is what it is and it'll be what it's gonna be so now that we got russia in the building you got to understand that it's a reason why these top tier puppets these top tier puppets are all getting active the top rappers the top businessmen, the richest guys in the culture are getting active right now. 2024, you think it's a coincidence that all these actors and all these rappers are getting active right now? Why you think it ain't happened last year? Or why you don't think it happened a year before that? Or 2019, why you think right now all these rappers are getting active? It's because it's a distraction, my G. A huge distraction. 
It's so much going on in the world right now. And one thing for sure, two things for certain. I told y'all a long time ago, 2024 is a Kobe year. And 2024 is a very, very important year. So we're going to watch with our own eyes. We're going to watch the top puppets fall from grace. We're going to watch the hugest empires crumble. Because these are going to be the distractions to distract you from what's going on over there in Israel. What's going on over there with the Palestine and all of that. It's a war going on outside that no man is safe from. And let me tell you something. The top nations are choosing sides, my G. So even with, with Russia being in the building, you got to understand something. That's a sign from the divine, my G. That's a sign from the universe. I told you when the downloads are downloading, they are downloading. I get the downloads at a, at a split second. And because I can see through the smoke and mirrors, because I can see through the smoke and mirrors, because I am one of them ones, as soon as the download and the sign hit, I can see it. So you got to know I'm talking about these puppets. I'm talking about these celebrities. I'm talking about these rappers. And I'm talking about them going to war lyrically, battle. But you got to ask yourself the big question, the big picture. Why? Why now? Why? Because the high erupts in the elites, if we like these guys or not, if we, if we like these dudes or not, they are working for the elite. All of them. K-Dot. K-Dot works for the elites. Drake. Drake definitely is working for the elites. Huh? Huh? Rick Ross, all of these multi-billionaire, millionaire, they all working for the high erupts and the elites. Because there's so much going on in the world right now. It's so much death and destruction taking place right now that the, the American people, you know, especially black people, FBA, the foundational black American, they need to be distracted. They need to be totally blindfolded. Because if they're not blindfolded, then everybody's going to be paying attention to the war that's about to take place. And you know what? We're going to have something to say about it. We're going to have things being posted on TikTok. We're going to have things being posted on social media. It's deeper than rap, my G. I always tell y'all that it's so much deeper than rap. See, I'm not very, you know, I'm not fully aware on the ins and out and the intricate details on what's going on with that war. But I'm going to tell you this. Russia has made it known that they are picking a side. I think Russia is with, who is Russia with? Russia is with Palestine, or is, uh, huh? Israel or Palestine and, and America and Great Britain said, hey, we rocking with those guys. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the nations on this globe are taking sides right now, coming with that war, coming with all that. Yeah, and then you got to understand something. Just yesterday, yeah, okay, well, Russia's picking sides. Russia's with Iran, Israel, whatever. But drones, war drones, bombs, missiles have been shot into the air already. Already. So the war is already taking place. The war has already been set off. World War III is on the brinks. And see, I want to get a little deep when it comes to this situation right here. Because I got a lot of DMs, uh, you know, considering this. And I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to address these rappers, but I'm going to use these rappers, I'm going to use these actors, I'm going to use these celebrities to go into what's really going on in the world. I'm going to bring y'all in with J. Cole and Drake and Rick Ross, and then we're going to talk about what's really going on in the world. Because everybody's asking grown man business. Is this biblical? You know, the war, you know, Russia, China, Great Britain, America. Everything that's taking place, Palestine, Israel, is this biblical? And see, I'm here to tell you something that you ain't heard nobody say, not even Hassan Campbell. And again, big salute to Hassan Campbell. Nothing about what's going on on this earth right now has anything to do with God. That's the big trick. That's where they tricked y'all. 
they know that so many people read the Quran. So many of y'all believe in the Bible word for word, scripture for scripture. Y'all haven't done any due diligence or any research to see where the poison is at in the Bible. Where's the poison at in the Quran? So all the high erupts and the elites had to do is recreate the prophecies in these books. None of this has anything to do with God. God, it did. yo, yeah, the prophecies are being fulfilled by man. Humans are fulfilling the prophecy. Humans are making these things happen so that everybody can believe that the prophecy is happening. Little do y'all know, little do y'all understand that God doesn't have a hand in any of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it get real, it get, listen man, it get deep, it get wicked, and it's always deep in the rap, and it's realer than real, what I'm telling you right now. Oh, the eclipse, what you think, you thought that was by coincidence? You thought that that, nah, 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 that's been, this harp, they have ways to control the weather, they have ways to control the tsunami, they have ways to brainwash y'all and trick y'all, make an illusion. That war in Palestine, that was set off by humans. That was, listen, that was set off by the elites. Israel, Palestine, all the death that's going on over there, that was set off by the elites. Has nothing to do with prophecy. Has nothing to do with God, my G. Everybody think that what's happening on, on earth, what's happening in this globe, what's happening on and in this realm right now is, is, is prophecy. You know, God and Jesus said that this was going to happen. The, the Quran said that this was going to happen. And, you know, the Bible said that this was going to happen. So the high erupts and the elites sit back and say, you know what? How about we make these things happen? None of this is happening through, due, to, to, due to God. All of this is happening at the hands of humans, at the hands of the high erupt and the elites. So when you thought that the rapture was coming, no, nah, that ain't that ain't no way, that ain't coming, homie. That that was an illusion. That was an illusion. Everybody thought the eclipse was gonna bring superpowers and the eclipse was gonna bring X, Y, and Z. But being as though the eclipse was man. Did that man set that up? It's a scare tactic. It's a distraction. What's going on in Palestine with all this death and destruction? That was caused by man. You understand what I'm saying? God don't have his hand in this. So you got to take that out the situation. These books, these books. It has some truth in these books. It's some truth in the Bible. It's some truth in the Quran. But being as though man put their hands on the Bible, it got, it got poison in there. Being as though man put their hands on the Quran, it got poison in there. And the higher ups and the elites know that the majority of the world either believe in the Quran or they believe in the Bible. And in these books, it says the end of days is coming. The, the you know... The Antichrist is coming. But I'm here to tell you, they're going to make all it. This is not the hands of God. This is the hands of man. They know you believe that the Antichrist is coming. They know that you believe that. So they're going to make an illusion for you to see it coming. And while you're sitting there looking for the Antichrist, while you're sitting there saying this is the end of days, while you're sitting there saying all of those things and believing it, they're, they're, they're setting a the play up for y'all. They're setting a the trap up for y'all. And one thing for sure, two things for certain, hip-hop is the most powerful music on the earth. Hip-hop is the most powerfulest genre of music on the earth. On the planet earth, hip-hop, there's nothing close so hip hop is going to be used. They're not going to use country music to, to, to blindfold y'all. They're not going to use rock and roll to blindfold y'all. They're not going to use any other genre to blind. It's going to be hip hop. So now let's, let's connect the dots. Even Drake then jumped out the window. 
Rick Ross. When, when you ever saw Rick Ross jump out the window? But these puppets got to play ball or they lose everything. They lose everything. So all these puppets, and, I, you know, I will say this. J. Cole is, is smarter than the average rapper. So J. Cole not wanting war, I respect that. But the fact that you did a diss track, you jumped out the window, you you in it. You thought also you thought that because you retracted and you cease fire, that you haven't already played a part in the puzzle, a destruction. You didn't you, you, you don't you don't believe that you have exposed yourself to the people that can see clearly through the smoke and mirrors. We see you already, J. Cole. You did the track. You went in the studio, you recorded it, you released it. You put gasoline on the fire already. The house is burning down. Now you want to go get the water hose and spray water. It is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. I said that, man. The, 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 you know, when it come to when it come to Rick Ross, that's the only part of the diss that I didn't like, but everything else was fire. I love the angle. I love that he called Drake a white boy because only a white boy would put blackface on, homie, and put a whole bunch of red lipstick around his mouth. Only a white boy would do that. So the fact that Rick Ross called him a white boy, I love that. But the grand scheme of things is, it's all a play. It's all a trick being ran right in front of our eyes. The majority of black people right now are talking about a beef in hip hop. Not paying attention that World War Three is about to take place. Russia said we riding over with, with, with Israel or Palestine and, and America and Great Britain said, look, we riding with them. And now we had, yeah, we had odds now. And you know what? China's sitting back. China, China ain't said a word. China's saying, you know what? We going to bomb when it's time to bomb. Now, this is where I disagree with a lot of these content creators. Like it or not, America is the superpower. I know a lot of you foreigners don't like the fact that we are in control. A lot of you foreigners really believe, oh, this is Babylon, and Babylon is going to fall, and Babylon is going to ex... No, no, that's not... That, that, they thought the same thing back in Pearl Harbor. They said America is weak, America's divided, and they tried to attack Pearl Harbor, and we dropped a damn nuclear bomb on their ass and got rid of them. It is what it is, and it'll be what it's going to be. So if Russia likes it or not, if China likes it or not, if you like it or not, they don't want war with America. They don't want war with us. They know if even with the immigrants over here, even with whatever you got going on. When it's time to go to war, we going to war. So when you drop that nuke, it better be right. It better hit direct. We don't need no subliminals. Don't leak. No, don't leak nothing. Go straight for the because when you play with a murk, when you play with us. We're going to show you who daddy is. We're going to show you who the boss is. We're going to spank that ass, like it or not. Racism, immigration, whatever the situation is, power outage, whatever you want to use, whatever scare tactic you want to use on the American people, you need to know it don't matter. They did the same thing back in the day in the 60s and the 50s when they said, oh, America's weak. America went through a Great Depression. America's divided. We can attack America and we dropped a bomb on Hiroshima and showed your ass we the last ones you want to play with. So when you come over here, you got to understand this is I'm not going to give you the scare tactics. I'm not. Listen, man, if it's time to go, then it's time to go. When you listen to these content creators and they keep asking you what you're going to do. What you going to do if this happened? What you going to do if that? Well, listen, if it happened and it's time to go, you get right with God and it's time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Wisdom be 100%. And I have a lot of conversations with foreigners. I have a, I have a lot of conversations with Caucasian people and, and Asians and, and, and Haitians and Africans. And, and this is what you got to understand about foreigners. Why it is dangerous for them to be over here. 
is because they'll come over here and make money. They'll come over here and work. They'll come over here for a better life. But in the back of their mind, they hate America. In the back of their mind, they want America to fall. And the one thing I tell them all, regardless what race or creed, it's a reason why America is America. It's a reason why you left your land and you came over here to work. You talk down on America. You think it's X, Y, and Z. You really believe that, that, that uh, America is Babylon. And see, again, these scriptures, these, the, 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 the Bible, the Quran, it's been poisoned, my G. It's been written over and over. It's been tinkered with. It's been poisoned. So now they got y'all thinking that America is Babylon, and they got y'all thinking that Babylon is falling. They lied to y'all. America is the greatest plant, the greatest country on the face of the globe. And we got a, oh, we got a whole lot longer to rule, homie. We got a whole lot longer to rule this motherfucking earth. Why you think China, Africa, Russia, the BRIC nations all had to gang up to go against America? Why you think that? It's deeper than rap. It's deeper than white people. The original man is here. The original man, FBA, foundational black Americans. We are not Africans, homie. We are descendants of the, we are, yeah, homie. We got that more in us, the moors. We, we more, more, yeah, listen, homie, it get deep, it get wicked, and it's always deeper than rap. So America is going nowhere. You need to know that. And if it does come to whatever war they talking about, X, Y, and Z, homie, let me tell you something. Get a generator. Get some extra bottles of water in your house. Have some canned goods. I would tell you to prepare for something. But understand this. We're going to bomb on everybody before it all the way go up. We're going to bomb on everybody. Think about the tricks that they, they, they playing with y'all. America, the dollar bill is falling. The dollar bill is not worth anything. I had a conversation with an African the other day because, you know, I drive trucks. You know, I'm crossing state lines at all times. I had a I had a conversation with an African. And he told me the American dollar is falling. The American dollar is almost over. The American dollar is not worth anything. And you know what? I asked him, well, why the hell are you over here working for the American dollar? Then Why not go? How about this? I'm going to call dispatch. I'm going to tell them that you want to get paid in African money. Oh, you, you want mine. You don't mind getting paid in African money, would you? Because, you know, their American dollar is going to fall. Their American dollar is going to fall. So, so I'm going to call the people and I'm going to tell them, hey, Jeffrey wants, to, his name, Jeffrey wants to be paid in African money. But he don't want it. So you telling me, so you were African telling me that the American dollar is folding, but you over here working for the American dollar. You see the lies they tell y'all? You see the lies they run through y'all? You see, and if you ain't seeing through the smoke and mirrors, you will believe that the American dollar is falling. But the same people that's telling you the American dollar is falling are give they right arm to come to America to make a better life for themselves. You know, so when you get to talking to grown man being his TV, when you get to doing the due diligence, when you get to, when you get to, listen, 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 listen. Yeah, yeah. Everything in America is in taxed. Everything in America is taxed. Everything in America, you don't own anything. But where else? So you think you're going to go to Africa and own something? You let me let me ask, I'm asking you, do you think you're going to go to Africa and not pay taxes every year? Do the research. Oh, it's worse over there. You're not only going to get taxed, but your ass going to get extorted if you make a certain amount of money. The government, the, the local police, the, the, the local government, they are going to extort you over there in Africa. You think you're going to go to the UK and not get taxed? You think you're going to go to China and not get taxed? You think you're going to go to Russia and not get taxed? Where you think you're going to go on the face of the earth, buy property, buy land, and not get taxed? 
You're going to live off the grid where? See, when you talk to people like this, ask them the right questions. You're going to live off the grid where? Because, I, you know, again, I'm not your average black dude. This is grown man business TV. I spent two, three weeks in Bangkok. I spent two, three weeks over there in, in the Fifi Islands. Thailand. Other side of the globe, homie. And one thing for sure, two things for certain. Your ass ain't going to go off the grid. They'll send the government into the mountains, into the woods to come get you up out of there. They'll, yeah, you will be locked up abroad if you go over anywhere and don't pay taxes and don't get extorted and don't get taken advantage of the same way our government take advantage of us. So, again, again. You got to understand something. You're going to pay the cost to be the boss. And in America, it's not perfect. There is no other country in the world. In the world, my G. That you're going to get a better. Yeah, we are the greatest nation. We are the greatest nation. Oh, you don't own anything. Oh, we own a lot of shit over here, homie. We owning things over here. For sure. Uncle Sam run the world. See, you, see y'all, see, again, you came to the right place. You think Uncle Sam only exists in America? When you say Uncle Sam, who are you talking about? Because the Uncle Sam that I'm talking about, those higher ups in the elites got their hands in every nation across the fucking world. Yeah. Yeah. See, you think Uncle Sam only, see, they done brainwashed y'all so much. And this game that I'm giving up is, is so necessary. They got y'all thinking that Uncle Sam only exists in America. <laughs> Get some stamps on your passport. And what you'll understand is Uncle Sam rules the globe. The title Uncle Sam, that's just a cover-up for the higher-ups in the elites. See, the higher-ups in the elites, they get puppets. And they put the puppet in front of them. So you talking about Uncle Sam, not understanding Uncle Sam is in every... He's all over the globe, homie. But you think Uncle Sam, because the picture of Uncle Sam, he got an American flag on, you think he just exists in America. So when you say we don't own anything I can somewhat agree with that this property right here I own this I have the deed for this property you understand what I'm saying I own this property but I'm about to pay about eight thousand dollars in property taxes this year you already know if you have not tapped into the channel if you have not subscribed to the channel please subscribe Please subscribe. You already know what time it is. You already know how we living. You already know when you come to Grown Man Business TV that the real is the real. The real is the real, homie. It is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. So you got to understand something. To live like this, to live like this, you're going to pay property taxes. You're going to pay property taxes. And HOA, you're going to pay the cost to be the boss. Make sure you subscribe, homie. Man, if this was an Airbnb, <laughs> if this was an Airbnb, you feel me? But if you, if you subscribe to the channel, when you subscribe to the channel, what you will understand is I show the pool when it's beautiful outside all the time. So I must be living in the Airbnb. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all good. Akalon lifestyle, you know what I mean? Let them, let them, let them do what they do. They get a little too disrespectful. Shoot them in the head. But let them talk. Let them rock. You know? So again, America is the greatest nation on the planet. There is none like it. There is no, there is no duplicate there is no nobody even close and again i love the fact that you know again like i said the the, the foreigners 
or what uh, it, it weakens America. Because these foreigners don't mind taking advantage of the American dream. These foreigners don't mind taking advantage of the life in America. They send the money they make in America back wherever they came from, which is, is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. But in the back of their mind, they hate America and they, they wish that America would fall. And they press this agenda and they press this whole narrative that America is Babylon and America is going to fall. And I'm here to tell you, man. The furthest thing from, from, yeah. And as soon as you press our back against the wall, you already backing us into a corner. But as soon as our back touches the wall, we going to bomb first. We going to bomb on your ass. And then the American citizens, because we all strapped up, we going to start going to war with the foreigners on American soil. We're going to start doing due diligence on the, it is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. That's the war that's going to take place. But trust me, America ain't falling no time soon. And for everybody that think the American dollar is, 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 is devalued, for everybody that think that the American dollar is not worth nothing, get your money in African. Hey, how about, how about you tell them, pay me in Russian shingles. Pay me in, in yen from out there in China. We would like to be paid our paychecks with yen. And see how disappointed you are. It is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be, homie. Now, when you break down America, yeah, it get deep. America is no different. See, the only thing with America is that we did have a constitution that meant something. And a part of that constitution is that we can go to war with a tyrant government. You got to understand something, why this, this country is what it is. Why we built it and made it what it is. It says that we are the property of America or the U.S. government. But you know what? You fuck around too much and we'll go to war with the U.S. government. We'll go to war with them. But you got to ask yourself, why is all these Haitians running to America? Why is all these Chinese people running to America? Why is all these Mexicans running to America? Why are all these Palestine, Israel, you know, uh, Ukrainians, why are they all running to America? Why are these immigrants in New York begging for work vouchers to make the American dollar if the American dollar is failing? It's because they lie to y'all. That I'm just here to bring the truth. I'm here to bring the light. I'm here to bring the truth. I'm here to bring the light. They lied to y'all. The American dollar is more powerful than any currency other than time and energy. Because, <laughs> you know, time and energy are the highest forms of currency. But when it comes to any other currency, homie, the American dollar, yeah, we trump, we, yeah, come on, we trump that. No point intended. Yeah, well, you know, there you go. <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> yeah, you know what I meant. Ask your, ask your, ask your employer, ask your, your next client if you run your own business, ask them to pay you in yen. Ask them to pay you in, in yen and, 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 and rebels and, and, and yeah, whatever. Ask them to pay you in that. <laughs> If the American dollar is, is so devalued, if the American dollar don't mean nothing, they lied to y'all. And, and again, we tie all these angles in with the rappers. Love what Rick Ross did, you know what I'm saying? Drake lukewarm. Drake is, is soft as Dollar Tree cotton. Drake need to do a, a collab album with, with uh, uh, Sexy Red. Since he loves Sexy Red so much, they need to do a collab album called Bend That Ass Over and Let the Coochie Breathe. And, and Drake should let his coochie breathe. No ditty. J. Cole, we don't respect it, homie. We don't, we don't, we don't respect it. You are a puppet just like Drake is a puppet. You are a puppet like any other rapper, athlete, celebrity, multi-millionaire, hundred millionaire. You are a rapper and an actor and a puppet. We don't, we don't respect that, homie. We know who you are already. You, you should have stayed on business. You should have stayed on business and you should have kept dissing and, 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 and causing a distraction because hip hop is causing a huge distraction. And it's got to understand something. White people know what's going on. White people like rap music, but they also know that a war is about to take place. 
These celebrities, Rick Ross, you think he built that doomsday bunker for nothing? You think he built that doomsday bunker for nothing? They know what's going on. The agenda is to distract black people. We are the most powerful. They know who we are. They know what we are. They know what we bring to the table. The, 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 the agenda, the plot, the scheme, the plan is to make sure we don't remember, to make sure we don't know who we are, to make sure we never tap back into our power. You rappers need to start beefing. You better get active. You rappers better get involved or we'll take everything you got. You are still puppets. Diddy is not enough. Oh, we thought we had him with P. Diddy. Everybody was talking about P. Diddy. Everybody's talking about no Diddy. But now we starting to look at it. Eh. Yeah, maybe he did it. Maybe he didn't. But we don't, you know, is it, is it necessary? Yeah, we starting to see that y'all ain't doing that to y'all white predators. All of the white boys that got domestic violence charges in the NFL, all of the white boys that got, got pedophile charges in the NBA, all of the white boys in Nickelodeon, and all of the white boys in Subway, y'all ain't tearing them down. But y'all, So we starting to see. So now they saying, hey, we need more fuel on the fire. Diddy is not enough. I like that. Yeah, let's let's talk. Let's talk history. They learned everything. They did learn everything from, you know, the Kimites out there in Kemet. But what we finding out is over here in America, D, we got the same pyramids and we got even bigger pyramids over here in America. We got even older pyramids over here in America. Whew. Did you know that they found bones? The oldest bones in the world they found here in America recently. The oldest bones in the world were found in America. The, 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 the biggest pyramids, the oldest pyramids was found in America. And what they're not telling y'all is that the Kimites learned all that shit from somebody over here in the Americas. And it was all black people over here, baby. See, the game is, the game is deep. The game is deep. Why you think, bro... I drove some, I drive trucks, I cross state lines at all time. And I might post some 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 video that I took over there in the Grand Canyon. <whistles> Rashad Jamal wasn't lying. A lot of those mountains are tree stumps. I took video of it. A lot of those mountains are tree stumps, homie. So they got y'all believing over there in Africa. That's where it started at. Everybody learned from, from the Kemet, from the Kemite people over there where the pyramids was at. But what they don't never want to tell y'all is that in America, right here, and I, we already know Europeans are foreigners to this land. Before they came over here, it was black people here. And over here, before Europeans came over here, we had already built pyramids two times the size of the ones in Egypt, in, in Kemet. We have all we had done. So the reality of the situation is the Greeks learned from the people in Kemite and Kemet, the Kemite people in Kemet. Who the f did they learn from? That's where they lost y'all at. That's where they that's where they tricked y'all at. They learned from us. They learned from us. Over there in 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 in, in, in uh in Memphis, Tennessee, the, the, the Chattanooga Mountains. You ever been to the Chattanooga Mountains, homie? It's pyramids over there. The Mississippi River. Before the continents broke apart, the Mississippi River, yeah, it's all connected. Over there in, 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 uh, in, in, in the, the Grand Canyon, trust me, you're not allowed to go over there because it's, they found the, yeah, the ancient remains. They found the ancient remains all in through those canyons. You can find the ancient remains where it started at. You could walk through the Grand Canyon and get to Africa. Did you know that? Did you know that? You could walk through the Grand Canyon and get to Africa. I always got to.
I always get tongue tied when I say this word, when I talk about these people. Yeah, the Moors, homie. The Black Moors, but you gotta understand something. Who did the Black Moors get touched by? Who did the Black Moors get their game from? Seth? The Anunnaki? It get deep, it get wicked, and it's always deeper than rap, homie. Seth, the Anunnaki, the fallen angels, that's what they call them. This is what they call them. In these books and in these scriptures, you know, they call them the Anunnaki. They call them the fallen angel. But these was just extraterrestrial. These was just, you know, people not from this land, you know, you know, beings not from this planet that didn't fall from grace. See, they always throw dirt on a the name. They always want to throw dirt on a the name. These guys didn't fall from grace, homie. They didn't fall and get kicked out of heaven. These are some of the lies that I'm telling you in the scriptures is lies. Because what they what they should have told you was these were knowledgeful beings from another universe, from another, you know, solar system that came to our planet. They didn't fall from grace. They fell from the sky. They came from yeah, the universe, and they came with knowledge. They came with knowledge, and yeah, we got some beautiful women down here. Oh, we got some gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous women down here. And if you notice, the Nephilim, the, 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 the Anunnaki, they wasn't having sex. They wasn't mating with European women. They wasn't having sex with, with at this time, a European was still an animal. Over there in Europe, before the Moors went over there and, and saved Europe, before the Moors went over there and revitalized Europe, white and white women and white men were still having sex with animals. White women and white men and European women and European men, they were still full of fur. They were still full of fur, my G. You understand? So, so, so when the when the, when the, when the Anunnaki came down into this earth, we was already ready. They already they blessed us with the knowledge, and and they showed us how to build power plants. They gave us the game. Those pyramids was was power plants, my G. The pure water running under them, constant. Yeah, man, we could get deep into this. Those was power plants. Oh, and, and you know, when you listen to these Europeans, they, they always sound so confused and surprised. Oh, we don't know how it happened. You know, it looked like power tools. Yeah, we had power tools back in the day. And we was in tune with the so-called fallen angels. Yeah, flood took place. But what you got to understand, even before the flood, it started here in America. The game started right here. The, Kim the Kimites learned from us. I know it's going to hurt a lot of you Africans' feelings. I know it's going to, it goes totally against what they taught y'all, how they brainwashed y'all. But the Greeks learned from the Kimites. And the Kimites learned from us. And we got the game from the Anunnaki. The war that's taking place is a man made war. The prophecies that are being fulfilled are being fulfilled by man. God doesn't have his hand in this situation at all. God doesn't. This is not this is not the universe. This is man. That's why the destruction is happening, because man, the higher ups and the elites, call, whatever you want to call them, have figured out how to create an illusion, how to. How to create these prophecies and fulfill these prophecies so that you believe these prophecies are being fulfilled by God. This has nothing to do with God. Allah, the, the Quran, whatever, has nothing to do with it. It's a lot of game I just gave y'all. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to lock into the channel. We going live again tonight. We going live again tonight. 
because you got to understand something. You got to trick and play with the algorithm with this thing. I already prepared myself to give y'all the game, but I did want to start with the rap battle because hip hop is our culture. I love this. I love this culture. I love this thing. But being as though I can see these rappers and these actors for what they are, being as though I can see through the smoke and mirrors, I, I had to tap into why it's happening. Why it's going down. Why is this happening? It's a distraction, homie. Don't you ever, don't you ever, let me tell you something. America is the youngest nation in the globe history, in the, on this planet's history. We are the youngest nation. You think Rome was going to rule longer than, than America? You thought that with everything we've built, with everything we've done, that Kemet was going to rule longer than America? We are the youngest nation. We got a lot longer to rule on this planet. A lot longer. These people got y'all thinking that the prophecies is being fulfilled. Hell no. These people's got you thinking that the American dollar is dying, that the American dollar has declined, that the American dollar ain't worth nothing. And then at the same time, come right over here and go to fucking work for the American dollar. Don't, 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 don't. You can't talk to me like that. You better talk to these sheep. You better talk to these sheep. You better talk to these content creators with that BS. You working right now for the American dollar, but want to tell me that the American dollar ain't worth nothing. Man, just, you ought to be smacked in your mouth, homie. America is way stronger than... You got to understand something. When they paint the pictures for y'all that America is weak, that America is this, it's a reason why they paint that narrative. It's a reason why it's a reason why they want you to believe that America is weak is because we are stronger. And all you got to do, you're already playing with us with these immigrants. You already got us upset and not feeling the situation with the money and the reparations not being paid out to black people. You already got us feeling the way. But as soon as you put our back against the wall, we're going to show you once again why America is America. And all these immigrants, they know it. They'd rather be in America than to be in their homeland, in their home country. Because when shit go down, they'd rather be here. They'd rather be over here. When it really hit the fan, they'd rather be in America. They don't want to be. They, they, they love their country. Oh, you got to put I'm Puerto Rican. Well, why you ain't in Puerto Rico building up Puerto Rico? Why you ain't in Africa building up Africa? Why you ain't in Haiti building up Haiti? Why you ain't in the Ukraine building up the Ukraine? Why you ain't in Mexico building up Mexico? Because it ain't no place like America, baby. And I don't care what they say. You want to hand me a yen or you want to hand me a hundred dollar bill and I need that hundred dollar bill. Crispy. Make sure it's crispy and make sure it got a blue strip across it. I want it fresh out the bank. Give a fuck. What? What? Why do I feel like this? Because before it was America, it was Morocco or Moroccan. You know what I'm talking about. This is our land. We ain't running. We the only ones. Black people, we the only ones never ran from our land, no matter how hard it got, no matter how crazy slavery got, no matter how much killing and, and racism and redlining and everything they did, we never ran to Africa crying for help. We never ran to no other land. So you got to know we going to go out for this. They got y'all thinking Africa is this, but don't nobody want to go to Africa because when you go over there, you realize they government more corrupt than our government. The black people in Africa, government is more corrupt than our government. They were selling, they were selling Africans to the white man. We not, I'm not African. Those Africans end up in Haiti, Jamaica, the islands, the Virgin Islands. Those Africans end up over there, but their government, their police are way more corrupt than ours, homie. Oh, it's bad over there. I don't give a fuck what they show y'all on TV. I don't care how many little areas they show y'all with new construction and new properties being built. You don't want to live in that shit. We don't want, I don't want Africa. You keep that shit, homie. And we'll go to war about it. Africa is controlled by China. Africans ain't even got control of Africa. What the fuck is you talking about? 
America is the real Egypt. America is the, yeah, yeah. They always tell y'all they looking, what's that place they tell y'all they looking for all the time? Um, what's that, what's, what's the name of that place, man? I can't think it's on the tip of my tongue. No ditty. They always tell you, we're looking for this land. What was that land called they always looking for? Oh, we're looking for this land and it's underwater and, you know, it was the greatest nation and the greatest civilization on the planet Earth. The most technology advanced. It was, it was, um, God damn it, I can't think of it. Atlantis. That shit is America. What they do is they, they keep y'all on the goose hunt. They keep y'all on the, yeah, all that shit was in America. The real Egypt, Atlantis, all these places that they talk about was right here in America. And that's why the white man want America so bad. That's why the white man tell you to look everywhere else. Look everywhere else in the world. Because the white man know that it was right here. And they, it's really, Atlantis was in Florida. Atlantis, and Florida's the only place where you got those natural those natural blue water hot springs. That's Atlantis, my G. That was Atlantis. They pointing everywhere else. This shit was right here. The first pyramids, the first man, all that. Why you, listen, if Africa was really like that, then white man would have went over there and took Africa and left America alone. They know what was over here. And they lie to y'all. You, 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 yeah, Florida. Yeah, 100%, homie. When you come to Florida, make sure you go visit those hot water springs. Those natural hot water springs where it's the bluest, it's the bluest water in the world. And the shit naturally comes out the ground hot. It's like these caves, my G. It's hard to explain, but you can Google it. It's, it's the illish shit. I'm, yeah. Memphis, Tennessee, the Chattanooga Mountains, Arizona, the Grand Canyon, all over America, all over this land. They know what this is and they know it belonged to us. You thought that they put African on American? You thought they added the African to American to give us? Yeah, they did that to separate us from this land because they know what was here. If, if the shit started in Africa, why would they call us a a African Americans so we could have a part of the so-called land where everything started at? So we could have claim to the so-called land that everything started at. Why? The white man, the, the white man would never have done that. They gave us African and American because that would separate us from this land, which is the original. The pyramid broke. Drive through the Grand Canyon and see what I'm talking. The shit is real. It is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. Big salute to everybody in the chat. Salute all in like Akaline Lifestyle. Um, one of my shooters. This is Grown Man Business TV. But it's definitely an open door for grown women, you know, and queens to, to, to get involved. And that's why all in Akaline Lifestyle is involved. You understand what I'm saying? This is this is a channel like no other. We're going to have fun with it. We're going we gonna to do this. We're going to do that. But the real ones, my day one investors know I get into this like it's nothing. I get to talking like this like it's nothing. That's why the channel been shadow banned. That's why the channel been having so, yeah, been, it has to grow organically because I've been talking like this for a long time. So the, the watchers, I like to call them the watchers, the higher ups and the elites. They know this this information gotta be, yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, yeah, we gotta shadow ban it a little bit. We gotta keep it under control because he's telling too much. He talking too much. Is you crazy? Let me check out the chat, man. Big salute. A lot of people don't even know that. I did my research. I got to looking into things and I realized that Atlantis is Florida. Back in the day before the continents broke apart, back in the day before Florida was actually the shape that it is now, it was a lot different. And Atlantis 
is Florida. There is no other tropical place, naturally tropical place in the Americas, connected or close to the Americas, but Florida. There is no other place on the Americas like Florida. And you got to be there to, to, to experience it, homie. What you mean, landlords? Ain't no landlords up here. What you mean? Let me check the chat out. Salute to everybody that's in the chat. <laughs> this is what you got to understand too, right? When you giving that game up, when you speaking that real, when you giving that that real game up, when you speaking that truth, you're going to always have people that want to question you. Um, you're going to have, always have people that want to go against uh, what you're saying only because it's the truth. See, when you get up here, you get to speaking that, 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 that BS. You get up here and you start to talking lies. You get to giving out the BS. These same people will not question that. The truth is what convicts you. The truth is what brings out the being defensive and combative and wanting to go back and forth. And I want to go into that a little bit. Um, like I said, the Bible, the Quran, it's been touched by man's hands. And anything touched by man's hands will be corrupted, will be poisoned. We are not the Anunnaki. They gave us the game. And then when we, what we did was we took the game and we took it around the world and we went over there to Europe and we started showing them how to do it. And we went over there to, 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 to Africa and, and, and Egypt and all of that. And we showed them how to do it. We showed them how to build pyramids and we showed them the game. How to, we, we, we took it around the world and we didn't understand that we got it from a pure place. We didn't understand that once we went over to Europe and showed these white people how to, how to shave their hair off and not be animals and we showed them how to take baths and we showed them how to brush their teeth and we showed them how to be presentable and we showed them that they were no longer animals that they could they, they, we showed them the way out we didn't think that it was going to be corrupted we didn't understand that we got it from a pure place they not getting it from a pure place they getting it from us so it's only right that they want to try to outdo us it's only right that in due time they'll take the very knowledge we gave them and they will go against us see we got it from a pure place so when we looked at the ant when our ancestors looked at the anunnaki we understood that they was higher than us we understood that they knew something they was so we never wanted to go against you understand so I say all that to say, exactly, Moors. But you got to understand the Moors got it from somewhere. Somebody, the Anunnaki gave it to the Moors. The Anunnaki gave it to the blackest people on the face of the planet. And they wasn't Africans, my G. Yeah, African, most Africans cannot grow a beard. We resemble black men like me, black men, FBA, grow out full beards. We, we resemble the Anunnaki. An uh, African, he don't resemble the Anunnaki. African, when you look at the, 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 the depictions and the, and the pictures and what people wrote down and drew out of the Anunnaki, they had waves, they had dreadlocks, and they had beards. You look at an African, a real African man, his shit growing like peas. He, he got peasy naps in his head. He can't grow a full beard. They are not, they are not us. But I but I said all that to say this. In the in the Bible, right? They got a whole story about the they got a whole story about the, the Tower of, of Babel. Right? It's a story about the Tower of Babel. And it speaks about how at this present time in 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 in, in history with the with, with humanity and everything these people were living to about 400 to 500 years old right so you have 400 to 500 years to gain the knowledge to learn the knowledge of the earth to learn the universe to earn and learn the cosmos right 
And what they came to and wanted and now all everybody spoke the same language. Everybody had the same culture. Everybody was in tune and being as though everybody was in tune and had the same language and had the same culture. They were and it had the knowledge because they was living for so long. They were able to come together and build a tower because they wanted to reach the heavens. They wanted to enter the heavens. They didn't want to die and go to heaven. That wasn't the that wasn't the the, the real thing. That's another lie that was put into that book. They didn't want to die to go to heaven. They knew that was heaven on earth. So they built the Tower of Babel and it went into the it went into the into the clouds and it went and it reached the heavens. In this story, they say that God got so mad at the fact that people was that smart and was living for that long and, and 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 they wanted to reach the heavens he got upset so what did he do he he knocked the tower of babel down not only did he knock down the tower of babel he regenetic he re, he, he he reached into our genetics into our dna and he put a splice on it and he said that man will only live to 120 years old not only will man only live to 120 years old we will scatter man all over the face of the globe. There will, be, there will be multiple different languages. There will be multiple different cultures. There will never be a time again where man all speaks the same language and all coincide at the same time. That will bring confusion. That will bring war. That will bring carnage. There will never be a time where they will be smart enough and, and aware enough and have as much knowledge to build another tower of Babel. Now, I, I had to give y'all that game real quick because that is a scripture in the Bible that everybody for the most part believes in. But I always use it because when I go through the chat and I see people uh, being combative or people being defensive or people trolling, right? I understand that it's because if you lock it into that story, right? Everybody is now speaking different languages. Everybody got scattered all over the globe and everybody's speaking different, different languages and everybody has different ideologies and everybody has different mentalities and everybody has different thoughts of what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. So instead of us all coming together, soaking up this game and using it and applying it, right? So that we could build a tower all the way to the heavens before we even can build one or two floors we now arguing you a christian you a muslim you a buddhist you this and you that and you that and you this so before we can even get to the heavens before we can even build something that's worth having somebody's going to question why we building the tower somebody's going to question why we are at why are we doing it you understand what i'm saying i'm giving you the game and it you asking me, what's this mean? What's that? That's for you to do the due diligence. That's for you to find out. All I can do is lead you to the water. I can't make you drink it. I can't make you. I can't make you accept it. I'm only here to give it. The download, the universe told me to give you this game and here you are. Here we are. It is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. When I tell you that. Atlantis is, in, is, is, is Florida You can do the due diligence Or you don't have to When I tell you that the first pyramids Were here in America You can do the due diligence Or you don't have to When I tell you that we got the game From the Anunnaki They taught us all They weren't fallen angels They weren't these demons They wasn't loose They lied to y'all Told y'all that the Anunnaki was Lucifer And falling from heaven That's a fucking lie White people don't even understand. We taught y'all how to, y'all was, y'all was having sex with the hogs. Y'all was, when we found y'all, y'all were animalistic. Y'all was still, y'all was animals and shit. That Y'all had so much fur on y'all. The animals was naturally thought y'all were animals. The animals weren't scared of y'all. Y'all, th the animals thought that y'all were animals. And then we taught y'all how to shave. We taught y'all how to clean up. We taught y'all hygiene. 
Once y'all got in tune with that, y'all started traveling and y'all made y'all way to, to Kemet and, and to Africa. Because Amer the Americas was so, y'all wasn't even able to travel across the transatlantic, my G, without being swallowed up, without being, yeah. Y'all had to go to Africa and then y'all made y'all way to the islands. America was his own Nah, you got it. You got it. You got it confused. Again, the lies they tell y'all. I, I, I stayed longer than I needed to, but I'm going to stay a little bit longer. Atlantis is not a myth. Atlantis was something spoke about from Plato. Plato, Plato, tomato, tomato, right? But this was because he traveled. This was not a myth, my G. This was him actually traveling to the Americas and seeing this nation, seeing this, this advanced civilization, this technology, seeing it with his own eyes because they didn't have cell phones. They didn't have the things we have now to document shit. They had to write everything down and you had to be a philosopher. You had to be you know, articulate. You had to be able to put this on paper. And he described the black people he saw over here. He described how dark they was. It, it wasn't just him. You know, everybody with, with Columbus and that, all these people that traveled over here, they, they said these people are dark like the Indian people. That's where the word Indians came from. It wasn't because they was Indians. It was because they were the people that was over here that they saw in the Americas, that they saw in Atlantis was so black. It reminded them of some other people that was even dark. Yeah. That was not a myth from Plato. The game is the game, my G. Now, when these people get their hands on it, they alter it. Again, when man touches it, he poisons it. He poisons it. And, he, and especially Caucasian, white, European, whatever. They say, let's change this up before they get their hands on it. That's where Indian came. These guys was... These Indians wasn't the typical Indian, not the $5 Indian that you used to seeing on TV. Those wasn't even Indians. Those were $5 Indians that you was able to pay $5 and get the whole identity of an Indian. Indians was, huh? My people is from South Carolina, Geechees. These have nothing to do with Africans. My people, man, my great, great, great grandfather and grandmother, they had nothing. They don't even know what, Af what? they don't, yeah. The game is the game and it'll be what it's going to be at all times, my G. So listen, man, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to lock into the channel. We're going to go live again tonight. Uh, We're going to get deeper into the situation. You know, like I said, you can, the rap game, you can bridge hip hop being the most powerfulest genre of music, the most influential genre of music. You can branch it and you can connect it to why everything is taking place. And I love the, 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 the activeness of these rappers. I love the battles. I, I'm just like y'all. I'm just like y'all. I grew up in this. I love to see the top rappers going to war. But I'm not going to lie. It's a reason why they're going to war right now. And as much as we love to see it, it is not the time. It's actually the worst time for these rappers to be distracting the people the way the people have been distracted. It's the worst time for Drake First you wearing blackface, now you doing songs with Sexy Red. Everybody asking me, why is Drake so in tune with Sexy Red? Out of all of the female rappers he could rap with, but out of all of the lyricists that he could get, out of all of the black female rappers that spit bars, why is he so locked in with Sexy Red? Well, Drake is half Jewish. And the higher ups in the elite, so that Jewish community, they would prefer Drake do songs with Sexy Red and, 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 and cause more destruction to the black community, to the black woman, to the black household. When you got a female like Sexy Red rapping with Drake. Drake is an imposter. Drake need his head chopped off, homie. Is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. I like what Rick Ross did. And I had the police reference. I wasn't feeling that. But everything else, calling Drake a white boy is exactly what's needed. It's time to call these suckers out.
Drake got DJ Academics. I mean a whole sucker, respectfully, because I like his I like I like DJ Academics. But at the same time, I understand DJ Academics is a Jamaican pussy bumba clot Ross clot. Bonty boy, Ross Clot, AK Academic, a Bonty boy, Ross Clot, Pussy Wap. That's what DJ Academics is. And you got him talking about the culture. Like he means something. He don't. In the 90s, DJ Academics would have no opinion on what's going on in the culture. Somebody from Wu Tang Clan would have smacked his mouth off by already, just like they did Joe Buttons. This thing that's going on in the hip hop industry right now is a distraction. It's distracting y'all from what's really going on. Conflict, war, Russia, China, Africa, all bunching up. Palestine, Israel, all going to war, babies dying. America, Great Britain, bunching up. Everybody picking sides. It's a war going on outside that no man is safe from. Word the prodigy. R.I.P. the prodigy. So listen, man, it's your boy, Grown Man Business TV. You feel what I'm saying? You can tap in, you can tap out, but you know my slogan. You know what I suggest. And listen, I suggest you tap in. I suggest you tap into this grown man business. I suggest you tap into this grown man content at all times. You already know what it is. It's straight off the bricks into the bottles. I'm giving this raw, pure dope straight off the brick into the bottles. Straight, raw, pure, uncut, no extras, no preservatives. I mean... No sugar coating, we not dressing nothing up. Listen, I gotta get it to you straight raw. No ditty. <laughs> oh yeah, we gon' we gonna talk about J Diddy. We're gonna talk about Jay-Z. Um tonight, man, we're gonna go in, we're gonna we're gonna elaborate with these with these rap battles. And we're gonna talk about Diddy. Now I wanna go a little bit deeper on what's going on with Diddy. Um, salute to everybody in the DMs that uh Everybody, yeah, no cut, my G. Yeah, one of one, no cut. Straight, raw, pure dope when you come over here. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about Diddy. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm one of the ones that have been exposing Diddy. I'm one of the ones that have been pointing the finger at Diddy. But I want to go a little bit deeper because, you know, one thing for sure, two things for certain. You know, we, we, we devour our own. And... What we got to understand is right or wrong, we got to stand with our people. If he right or if he wrong, we got to stand with him. You know what I mean? And people not understanding that. Our people don't understand that. But they people understand that. You know how many you know how many sex predators they got in their culture? You know how many rapists they got in their culture? You know how many child pedophilia and people that got child porn on their on they, on they computers in their culture? You know how many mad shooters they got in their culture? But they don't, they don't crucify their shooters. They don't crucify their bad. They don't they don't crucify them and they don't let us crucify them. But as soon as we get one of our elites, one of our puppets, one of our, you know, one of our P. Diddies, as soon as they want to chop the head off him, our people want to back him up. And I, you know, I ain't with that. Yeah. Conflict is gonna happen regardless if rap is around. But since rap is around and since rap is the most influential genre of music on the face of the planet, it's going to be weaponized. It's going to be weaponized and it's going to be used against the world. It's going to be especially used against us because it influences us first. We influence the world. We create the culture. We create the vibes. We create all of that and we give it out to the world. That's why you got... Yeah, listen, that's why you got... Poor, poor, super poor kids in Africa dancing to rap music, making YouTube channels, getting rich. That's why you got this African beats movement. Why they not rapping in Africa? Why, why Tim's ain't rapping and singing in her natural, you know what I'm saying, dialect? Why she ain't singing and rapping in her, in her, in her natural situation? She's now doing R&B music. She's rapping like black people. All of these African people that are now doing music and being able to make money and, and change their lives, they're tapping into black people culture. You got Puerto Ricans, you got Mexican OT, you got all of these different cultures coming to rap music. You, you Mexican OT didn't think to say, hey, let me do Mexican music. He came in and he went to Texas and he's a rapper now. 
I believe that Jesus' words have been poisoned. I believe that the Bible, I believe that the Quran, I believe that all of these religious books have been poisoned to control the people. Is it truth in it? Sure. Is it realness in it? Sure. But it's been poisoned. So now you got to be smart enough to see through the poison. You got to be, a, you, you can't just read the Bible and use it. It don't work like that. Real one or not, if Mexican OT is a real one or not, he's still doing black culture. He's still making black music. Mexican OT wasn't able to tap into his own culture and get rich because his culture don't move nothing. His culture don't, don't dictate nothing. His culture don't hold no weight. It don't hold nothing. Mexican music, don't nobody care about that shit. We don't listen to that. So your Mexican ass better come over here and rap like you black. And you better rap like the renters do. Japanese, African, Japanese and Chinese girls on the YouTube and TikTok rapping. And everybody, you know, oh, she can rap. Yeah, you better bring your ass to black culture. So conflict is going to happen. All that is going to happen. But yeah, we run everything. We run everything. The same way black music, hip hop runs the globe is the same way we was running the globe, building pyramids, giving out game, showing y'all what the Anunnaki showed us. And we changed the planet, black people. There is no, find an African with a full beard. Find an African where his hair ain't peasy and the motherfucker can't goddamn his skin all Oh, come on, man. We ain't. The Anunnaki wasn't that. We was made in the image of the Anunnaki. Black people. We was made in. When they say we was made in the image of. We was made in the image of the Anunnaki. That's why we got full beards, wavy hair, dreadlocks. That swag and that look to us. Yeah, homie. It is what it is and it'll be what it's going to be. So listen, man, be sure to tap into the channel, subscribe so you can get the notification. We going live tonight. We going live tonight. And I'm going to answer one. I'm going to go. I'm gonna, do you believe in heaven or hell? I don't believe in hell. I believe that heaven is here on earth. You don't have to die to go to heaven. You create and you manifest your reality and you manifest your heaven right here on earth. And if you are vibrating at a low frequency, if you are not in tune, then yeah, you will create hell on earth. So you don't, you, they lie to you. That's another part of that book where they lie to you, where they got you thinking you got to die to go to heaven. The whole time they are creating their heaven right here. They are experiencing heaven on earth right now. And your dumb ass think you got to die. You think you got to give up your whole life to go to heaven. You've been lied to. Go outside. Put your feet in the grass. Get in tune with nature. It's a part of heaven. So listen, man, you already know what time it is. It's your boy, Grown Man Business TV. Feel what I'm saying? You can tap in. You can tap out. But you know my slogan. You know what I suggest. And I suggest you tap in. Gang.